your class tonight. Everybody, I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and I want to give away a million dollars. All somebody has to prove is that they are smarter than a fifth grader. And this is my class, Cody! Guys, you ready to meet our new student? Yeah! He is a 27-year-old ER physician from Wilmington, Delaware, who attended Burnett Elementary. Welcome, Andrew Molinger. Andrew, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing great. You? Thank you. Excellent. And, and I'm guessing this is a picture of you at Burnett Elementary. I can't believe my mom found it. Now, you got a perfect 1600 on your SAT. You're setting me up now. Now I have to get them right. And I love this on here. Now, you went to Yale. Yes. And you said you were here today to redeem the name of Yale because we had someone from Yale come on the show, go for the million dollar question, I have to uphold the name, and in case you have anyone from Harvard in the future, I have to make sure I do better than they will. Oh, wow, okay. All right, well, I know you've taken a lot of tests in your life. Way too many. Wait, but you have new classmates today, and they're very smart. They're gonna be taking the same test you're taking, and you can cheat off of them. That's a good thing here. So pick one of them, and let's get started. Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. Okay, Sierra. Let's go. Yeah. All right, Andrew, let me tell you how this particular test works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. If at any point you want to stop taking the test, you can drop out with the money that you've acquired, and you can leave this classroom. No way. But before you go, you have to promise me you're going to do one thing. Like everyone that has stood here before you, you need to look into the camera and tell millions and millions of people, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> I promise. All right, I believe you. Let's find out. Is Dr. Andrew Nerlinger smarter than a fifth grader? Okay, I hope, Sierra, you know a lot about animals. First grade animals. First grade animal science, all right. First grade animal science. First grade animal science. The $1,000 first grade question is this. Which of the following is a term for a male turkey? Tom, Buck, or Harry? Which of the following is a term for a male turkey? Tom, Buck, or Harry? Sierra has locked in her answer. Sounds like three redneck guys on a hunting trip, doesn't it? <laughs> Tom, Buck, and Harry. Okay, I think I've heard of Tom Turkey before, and I know the $1,000 question is the most nervous one, so I'm gonna try to make this quick and go with Tom Turkey. You know, I've been waiting for two seasons to do this. One of the, one of the things that I have learned to do in my spare time is to sound like a female turkey. <laughs> I'm glad that's not the question. And when a female does that, you know who comes running? Tell me. A Tom, you got a thousand bucks. <laughs> got the first one out of the way. That's the big one. Nine subjects between okay. us and the million dollar question. Pick another one. That's a great idea. Social studies, first grade. Social studies, first grade, all right. All right. For $2,000, the first grade social studies question is, what is the last U.S. federal holiday of the calendar year? What is the last U.S. federal holiday of the calendar year? Sierra has locked in her answer. All right, let me explain your cheats real quick. You have two of them. You can peek at your classmates' paper, see if you like their answer. You have one copy, which means you must take the answer that they have written down, and you have one save. 
which means if you're wrong, but your classmate up here is right, they save you, you get the money and we keep going. You know, I can't decide whether or not it's Christmas or Thanksgiving. I don't think it's Christmas because it wouldn't be a religious holiday. I'm gonna go with Thanksgiving and I'm gonna lock it in. Who do you have cheering you on today? I have my beautiful girlfriend, Lisa McDonald, Dr. Lisa McDonald. Dr. Lisa, welcome to the show. Who's probably much more nervous than I am. And, and you guys met at Yale Medical School. We did, yes. Wow. Dr. Lisa, what do you think the answer is? Okay, I go for Christmas. It's a smart girlfriend you have. The last U.S. federal holiday of the year is Christmas, not Thanksgiving. <laughs> Apparently that wasn't on the SATs. Andrew, here's where we stand. If this fifth grader did not say Christmas, you are leaving here with no money after missing a first grade question. Take a look at the board. Andrew, this nine-year-old girl said, Christmas Day! <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Sierra, you just saved the doctor. <laughs> As a room, let's let out a collective sigh of relief. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. They can only help you two questions at a time. You need to pick another classmate and let's go for $5,000. I like Nathan. Nathan, come on up here. Okay, buddy. Now this ought to be, this ought to be interesting. Nathan. Will you please tell Dr. Nerlinger where you want to go to college? Harvard. Oh. <laughs> Why? A lot, of your, a lot of your relatives went to Harvard. It's a good school. I'll accept that. The Harvard man and the Yale man are at the podium. Eight subjects remain. Nathan, which ones do you like? Music and anatomy. Let's go with anatomy. Fourth grade anatomy. anatomy. Fourth grade and that. If I get this wrong, I'm not going to be able to go back to work. <laughs> the fourth grade anatomy question worth $5,000 is going to be revealed when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Dr. Andrew Nerlinger. He's got $2,000, we're about to play for five. You're an emergency room physician. Yes. Used to stressful situations. Not like this, but yeah. Ah, National Merit Scholar, perfect score on the SATs. This could be the night somebody walks out of here with $1 million. <laughs> you selected anatomy, doctor. Oh, if you don't get this one. I completely know. All right, here we go. You ready? For $5,000, the fourth grade anatomy question is this. Human fingernails are primarily made of a protein known as what? Keratin, melanin, or calcium? Human fingernails are primarily made of a protein known as what? Keratin, melanin, or calcium? The future Harvard man, Nathan, has locked in his answer. I know how much Nathan would love to help me answer this question, but I feel pretty confident that I know what the human fingernails are primarily made out of. Um, I'm going to go and lock in my answer of A, keratin. I will tell you this about Nathan. Nathan loves to answer the fourth and fifth grade questions. He likes the hard questions. Let's see if he agreed with you. Take a look at the board over here. 
The Yale man said keratin. The future Harvard man said keratin. You're both right. You got $5,000. Good job. You like music, huh? Music? OK. Seven subjects remain. Which one would you like, Andrew? Let's go with fifth grade music. I'm going to take Nathan on the road. All right, for $10,000, the fifth grade music question is, what composer wrote the ballet The Nutcracker in 1892? What composer wrote the ballet The Nutcracker in 1892? Nathan is locked in his answer. He is locked in. Was it, I, I'm thinking it may have been Tchaikovsky. I'm really thinking hard about taking the peak because I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue and I'll, I'll know whether, I'll know right away whether he's right. I'm gonna use my uh, peak. Peak. Take a look at the board. Let's see what Nathan wrote. Tchaikovsky. I don't okay. know how to spell it. Okay, very good. Nathan, you've helped me immensely. I thought it was Tchaikovsky before. Um, Nathan thinks it's Tchaikovsky. I'm gonna lock in Tchaikovsky. So the Yale guy wanted to peek at the future Harvard guy's paper. He liked his answer and he went with it. And the Yale guy has $10,000, you're right. Tchaikovsky wrote The Nutcracker in 1892. Come on, thanks, thank you. How about that? These kids are smart. I'm telling you, this is a smart class. I think we have some future National Merit Scholars in here I as well. I guarantee it, these kids are so smart. All right, there's three classmates to choose from. You need to pick another one, Doc. Olivia? Olivia, come on up here. Go ahead and pick a subject. I'm thinking second grade grammar. Second grade grammar, all right. Okay, Olivia. The second grade grammar question worth $25,000 is, how many plural nouns are in the following sentence? The boys were late to class because Cody had to defeat ninjas in the library. <laughs> been a little problem we've been having in this school. <laughs> How many plural nouns are in the following sentence? The boys were late to class because Cody had to defeat ninjas in the library. Olivia has locked in her answer. Okay, I'm gonna lock in my answer is two. <laughs> Doctor? Two's the right answer. You got $25,000. This next question is the only one on the board where if you miss it, you don't give money back. So there's no reason not to answer, okay? It's worth $50,000. You've got 25 right now. If you miss it, you still have 25. Pick your poison, doctor. U.S. Geography, second grade U.S. U.S. Geography. Ready for that? All right. Listen carefully. The $50,000 question is this. What U.S. state borders both Kansas and Utah? What U.S. state borders both Kansas and Utah? Your classmate Olivia is locked in. I know that Nebraska borders both Colorado and Utah. Can't really, I'm not really sure if it's Colorado or Wyoming. 
You still have a cheat left. The cheat's the copy. It's the copy. <sighs> Olivia said she was good. I think I'm going to try to answer this one myself. Kansas, just north of Nebraska. I'm going to lock in Wyoming. Let's see if you had used your copy, what this fifth grader would have said. What U.S. state borders both Kansas and Utah? Olivia said Colorado. Mm, Olivia. I will tell you this. One of you is right. It's either the doctor with a PhD from Yale or the little 10-year-old girl and once again, the fifth graders are smarter than the grown-ups. Olivia is correct. Colorado is the U.S. state that borders both Kansas and Utah. There was no reason not to try to answer. You still got $25,000. And another Yale grad wants out. Doctor, there is the camera. Remember the little agreement that we had. My name is Andrew Nerlinger, and I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He's a 29-year-old sales manager who attended Pinecrest Elementary. And I'm guessing, Ryan, this was when you were attending Pinecrest Elementary, huh? Unfortunately, that was me. Now, when you were at Pinecrest, did you have any nicknames? Uh, yeah, they called me Cash Money, Cash Man, everything involved with cash. Let's make some cash today, all right? I'm so ready. We want to give away a million. Now, Ryan, your five classmates over here up, are going to be taking the same test that you're taking, OK? okay. All right. And we're going to let you cheat off of them, so pick one of them. Let's get started. Wow. All right, Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. Thank you, Sierra. All right, now, if any point the test proves to be too difficult, Ryan, you can drop out of school. One little catch, Cash Man, before you go. You have to look into the camera over there and tell millions of people, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Oh, man, that's not happening. Not happening. not happening? All right. Well, let's find out. Is Ryan Cash smarter than a fifth grader? Woo! All right, Ryan. Ten subjects. Which one do you want? Well, Sarah, what are you good at? Music and grammar. All right, let's go with first grade music. First grade music. Let's do it. All right, Ryan, for $1,000, here's the question. In the modern musical scale starting do, re, mi, what note comes after T? In the modern musical scale starting do, re, mi, what note comes after T? I think I can do this one. Sierra has locked in. OK, so there's uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, T. Do. So what note comes after T? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I'm gonna lock in with do. Ryan, you've got some do. You got a thousand Let's turn 1,000 into 2,000, OK? Let's do, Let's do it right now. Pick another subject. You know, I'm going to go with first grade math. First grade math. I'm just going to knock him out. All right. For $2,000, Ryan, here's the first grade math question. Olivia has a box of crayons. She gives 12 to Cody. If she has 19 crayons left, how many did she start with? 
Olivia has a box of crayons. She gives 12 to Cody. If she has 19 crayons left, how many did she start with? Sierra has locked in her answer. Right. Did you sleep during math class? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Um, OK, 12 and 19. Just add the two up. That would be 31. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. All right. I was right. afraid you were going to take a shoe off. Yeah, that was terrible, yeah. <laughs> OK, I'm going to lock in with uh, 31. 31. That makes it unanimous in the classroom. You're right, you got $2,000. Yeah. Way to go, Sierra. Great, good job. All right, eight questions left. It is time to pick another classmate, Ryan. We'll pick Cody. Cody! Let's go, pick Cody. Come on, buddy. Let's do this. Yeah! All right, Ryan, eight subjects left. Time to pick one. All right. I'm going to go with second grade astronomy. Second grade astronomy. Ryan, for $5,000, here's the question. The ocean's tides are caused mainly by the gravitational pull between the Earth and what heavenly body? Cody is locked in. Oh, man. The ocean's tides are caused mainly by the gravitational pull between the Earth and what heavenly body? You know, OK, I feel pretty good about this one. I think it's the moon. I'm going to lock in with moon. I think it's the moon. Big money. Big money. Let's see what Cody had to say. The moon, he can't save you. He doesn't have to. You got $5,000. Yeah. All right, Ryan, I know you've got some uh, people here cheering for you in the audience. You want to introduce them? I have my beautiful wife, beautiful wife Stephanie, and the rest of my family. And who's, who's on the picture? It's a picture of my baby. Your baby. He's a doll. I could tell that's your baby. Beautiful family. All right, well, let's win some money, all right? All right I'm ready. You got 5000 Let's double that, Ryan. Let's double it. Pick another ready. subject. Let's win $10,000. You know what? We're going to knock out second grade. I want second grade animal science. Second grade animal science. Yes. The $10,000 question will be revealed when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Ryan Cash, has got some cash. He's got $5,000. We are about to play for $10,000. You selected second grade animal science. For $10,000, Ryan, here's the question. True or false, the wolverine is a member of the canine family. True or false, the wolverine is a member of the canine family. I thought it was one of the X-Men, so I can't help you. Cody's locked in. What do you think? I don't know. That one's rough. Wolverine is a member of the canine family. Wolverine. I should know this. A wolverine is a member of the canine family. True or false? 50-50 yeah. chance 50, you could yeah. try to answer it. And if you're wrong and he's right, he can save you. You know, I, I, I'm thinking false on this one. I don't think a wolverine is a member of the canine family. That's what I'm feeling right now. Um, that's what I'm gonna lock in with. I'm gonna lock in with false. False. <laughs> you're not sure. I'm not. You're banking on the fact he can save you if you're wrong. I Let's am. see if he can. Cody said 
fault. It's a weasel. Does that sound right? I sure hope so. You hope it sounds right? Sounds right to me. You got $10,000. All right. You have three classmates to choose from. Pick one of them. All right, we'll go with Mackenzie. Mackenzie, come up here. Oh, Mackenzie. All right. Six subjects left. You get this next one right. The worst thing that can happen is you're leaving with twenty-five thousand. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Ryan? You know what? I want that 25 grand. What are you good at in the third grade? I want a third grade one. Third grade grammar. You pick grammar. one. Grammar it is. Grammar. Third grade grammar. Third grade grammar. I want. Ryan, for $25,000, here's the question. Oh, it's a classroom club question. All right. Which means this was sent in to us by a viewer, in this case, Braden. And because we selected Braden's question, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader is going to send Avon Grove Elementary School a computer lab. How about that? Nice. All right. All right. Great. For $25,000, here's Braden's question. True or false? The following sentence is grammatically correct. McKenzie should have known the game was canceled. True or false? The following sentence is grammatically correct. McKenzie should have known the game was canceled. McKenzie has locked in her answer. I don't think I know this. You've still got your peak, you've still got your copy, you've still got your say. You know, I have to do this. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a peak. You want to pick? True or false? The following sentence is grammatically correct. Mackenzie should have known the game was canceled. Let's see what she thought about the sentence. Mackenzie said, false. Was that your instinct? That was my instinct. Um, I kind of think it's Mackenzie should have known. The game was canceled. Kenzie should have known the game was canceled. I want this 25 grand, so. Well, there is a foolproof way to do it. I know, I guess true, and I get 25 grand. It's foolproof, but it cost you not just your peak, which you just used, but a save as well. All right, you know what? I want 25 grand. So, she gets false, I'm gonna go with true. Got to do it. The sentence should read, McKenzie should have known the game was canceled. Hey. Either way, you've got, got $25,000, Ryan. It's all right. It's OK. $25,000, Ryan. <laughs> if you had trusted McKenzie, yeah. you would have saved your save. I'm sorry, Big Mac. We're halfway through the test. You've got okay. $25,000. $25,000. Yeah! Woo! It's the freebie question, the $50,000 question, because even if you miss it, you still have $25,000. Five subjects, pick one of them, Ryan. Third grade world geography. Third grade world geography. For $50,000, let's take a look at the third grade question. Which South American country extends the farthest east? Brazil, Argentina, or Uruguay? Which South American country extends the farthest east? Brazil, Argentina, or Uruguay? Mackenzie has locked in. Okay, I'm trying to picture a map of South America. That would probably be a good idea. 
On a map, the right side is east, left side is west. So Argentina is right over here. I think it's right alongside Chile, Chile and Argentina. And then there's Paraguay, which is in the middle. Uruguay is on the bottom. So I'm thinking Brazil is all this over here. And Brazil would be the farthest east. So I'm going to go with A. I'm going to lock in with A. Let's see what McKinsey said. Argentina. Ryan. Everybody over here had the right answer. McKinsey goes to school with them. Which South American country extends the farthest east? Brazil? Argentina or Uruguay for $50,000. Can we see what the class said? Brazil! Yeah! Yeah! There it is, right there. Good try. We are playing for $100,000. When we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Ryan Cash, has been money so far. Ryan, you've got $50,000. Four subjects left. It's time to pick another classmate. All right. All right, Nathan, come on, man. Nathan, buddy. come Save on. Save the best for last. All right, Nathan, help me out here, buddy. Four subjects left. What do you think, Ryan? All right. I'm going to go with fourth grade U.S. geography. Fourth grade U.S. geography. Ryan, this question is worth $100,000. Here it is. The headwaters of the Mississippi River are in what U.S. state? The headwaters of the Mississippi River are in what U.S. state? Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay. I don't think I know this. The headwaters of the Mississippi River. It looks like one of those questions that would just be obvious, Mississippi. But uh, it could be a curveball here. You don't think you know it, or you know you don't know it? You know what? I know I don't know it. And, uh... Now you have a copy left. I'm gonna put my trust in them. I think I'm gonna do that. So, that's what I'm gonna go with. Nathan's the man. I'm gonna go copy. Wow, risking it all. You're a sales manager. Salesman. You're a parent. I'm a parent. About to be a parent again. Yeah. And yet you trusted a 10-year-old boy more than you trusted yourself. I don't know. This kid comes off as a real bright kid. Steph, what are you thinking? I think we got our faith in he knows the right answer. Here. You got your faith in Nathan. Yes, we yep. do. You didn't say Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan's the man. The headwaters of the Mississippi River are in what U.S. state? The correct answer is Minnesota. What matters is if Nathan said Minnesota. It's okay. Take a look at the board. For $100,000, Nathan said... Minnesota! Money, cash, money. That is awesome. You may see the question and drop out of school before you hit this buzzer. Once you hit this buzzer, you have to answer it. 
Unfortunately, you've used both your cheats and your save, so you have no classmate at the podium to help you. Three questions between you and a million dollars. Which one do you want for 175,000? I'm going with fourth grade measurements. Fourth grade measurements. Fourth grade measurements. Ryan. Bring it. For $175,000, here is the fourth grade question. How many ounces are in one gallon? How many ounces are in one gallon? All right. I, I think I might be able to figure this out. So bear with me. <laughs> uh, okay, there's eight ounces in a cup. So. Two cups and a pint. 16. Two pints and a quart. 32. Four quarts in a gallon. 32 times four. Two times four is eight. Three times four, 12. 128 ounces in one gallon. 128, that's what I'm feeling here. Now, Ryan, are you absolutely sure you could walk away with $100,000? I'm gonna lock in with what to say when we reach this point in the game. You have $175,000. Does he cook at home? Never. Never. <laughs> you had to be sweating on that. Oh, I was. <laughs> Ryan, when we come back, we are playing for $300,000. She's got $175,000 in cash. Two questions left. You may see the question and still drop out, okay? Okay. Pick your poison. Fifth grade U.S. history or fifth grade literature. These are both tough subjects for me. Um, I'm, I'm gonna give my uh, whirl on fifth grade literature. Fifth grade literature. Yeah. Let's read the question carefully. For $300,000, here's the literature question. The legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle were written by what American author? The legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle were written by what American author? The legend of Sleepy Hollow. You know, I don't know who wrote Rip Van Winkle. Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Do you know who wrote The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Uh, let's see if I can pull it out on my memory bank. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Ah, uh, okay. Um, there was a couple books that are whirling there with authors, you know. I if your memory bank is wrong, your bank book is going to drop down to $25,000, which means you will be giving back $150,000. If your memory bank is right, 
you jump up to $300,000. You know what, I, I think I have my answer. Uh, okay, so. My answer is that I'm gonna drop out of school because I don't know this. $75,000. Now you said it wasn't gonna happen, it did, so you know what you gotta do, there's the camera. My name is Ryan Cash, I'm a small business wireless salesman, and I'm definitely not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time, goodbye everybody! Foxworthy, and I want to give someone a million dollars. All they have to do is prove that they are smarter than a 10-year-old. It sounds easy, but so far, nobody's done it. Let's meet my class. Cody! your new classmates? Yeah. He's a 29-year-old firefighter who attended Coldwater Canyon Elementary. Please welcome Steve Hale. What's up, kids? How you doing? Woo! Hey, Steve. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for My having pleasure. me. Good to see you, and I'm... Oh, I yeah, love that's, that. that's a scary sight there, huh? And, and, and you know what? I, I'm reading on the card, it said, even when you were little, you knew you wanted to be a firefighter. That's correct. I, I actually worked, went on a field trip in preschool to the fire station, Fire Station 89 in North Hollywood, that I actually work at right now. Oh, wow. Now, I know you brought some people here today to cheer you on. Do you want to I introduce did. them? I brought my two best friends, my wife, co-worker, and we also have Wilson the Fire Dog. He's our LAFD mascot, and he does teach his kids fire and life safety. Oh, that is so awesome. This is my lucky helmet. I brought it for good luck, so I'm going to set it down right yeah, here. It's this, is, this is not, this one has seen a fire or it's two. It's seen a fire or two, but it's been my good luck charm, and I'm going to put it right down here next to me, and it's going to win me a million dollars well, you, today. You know what? I have a special place in my heart for firefighters. Well, thank you, You Jeff. guys are true American heroes. Thank you. You are. Woo! Well, sure. how do you think he's gonna do today? <laughs> yeah, me too. Woo! 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 All right, Steve. Well, these five fifth graders are gonna be taking the same test that you're taking, so pick one of them. Let's get started. McKenzie, come on up. McKenzie, come on up here. That's pretty cool having a real life firefighter in the class, yeah. isn't it? Isn't that neat? So neat. Very cool. And a Dalmatian. He's so cute. He's so cute? Yeah. The dog or the fireman? <laughs> Both. Both, yeah. See, I knew somebody loved me in yeah. this world. So you're going to be a politician, huh? Uh. All right, Steve, let me tell you how this works. On the board, we're going to have 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. Your first correct answer is worth $1,000. The 10th question, should you get it right, is worth $500,000. You extinguish this burning test, we're gonna give you one more question. It's gonna be worth $1 million. One little catch, if at any point the test proves to be too difficult, you can drop out of our classroom, okay? Okay. You can take the money that you've acquired and you can leave, but before you go, there's a camera right over there. I need you to look into it and tell the world I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I promise to do that. We got a deal? We got a deal. All right. Let's find out, is Steve Ham smarter than a fifth grader? Woo! Steve, don't 
Don't know if you have a strategy or not, but we have 10 subjects. You can pick them in any order you like. Mackenzie, what are you good at? U.S. Geography and Music. Okay, let's go with third grade U.S. Geography. Third grade U.S. Geography. For $1,000, Steve, here's the third grade U.S. Geography question. Oh, it's a classroom club question. I love these. What that means is this little girl, Janessa, she watches the show and she sent us a question. All and, right. And because we elected to use her question, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader is going to give her school a computer lab. How about All that? Right. I love these questions. All right. For $1,000, let's see the question that Janessa sent in. True or false, the Hawaiian Islands were once known as the Sandwich Islands. True or false, the Hawaiian Islands were once known as the Sandwich Islands. Mackenzie's locked in her answer. Hmm, Hawaiian Islands. I'm gonna go ahead and Answer false, and I'm going to lock that in. Let's see what the class said. They all have the right answer. The Hawaiian Islands were once known as the Sandwich Islands. The class said, true, true, oh. true, true. Oh. I imagine in your career, you have saved a lot of kids. Probably so. This is probably the first time that a kid is going to have to save you. It's probably so. Let's hope Mackenzie said true. For $1,000, she said true. You got it. We got it out of the way. We got it out of the way. Got it out of the way. We have nine subjects left. This next one is worth $2,000. Pick it, Steve. Okay. I'm going to go with first grade spelling. First grade spelling. <laughs> so instead of climbing up the ladder, I'm we're going go down, down a couple down. of rungs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> For $2,000, Steve, here's the first grade question. The name of which day of the week comes last alphabetically? The name of which day of the week comes last alphabetically? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Okay, I'm just running through my mind all the days of the week, and uh, there's two days that end in T, Tuesday and Thursday, and if we were to go alphabetically, TU is comes after TH. So well, we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna lock in Wednesday as my answer. First grade was a long time ago. Well, Wednesday was yesterday. It is the right answer. You got $2,000. Oh, Good job, Mackenzie. Steve, you scared me there. I scared myself. Leslie, were you a little scared? Yes, I was. Yes. <laughs> Are you... Are you more scared when he goes to work at the fire station or when he's no, up I'm, here? No, I'm more scared here. More scared here. Yeah. You know what amazes me is I wouldn't think somebody that runs into burning buildings would be sweating on a first grade question. Well, I sweat easily, so <laughs> it doesn't take much. All right, here's the good news. You've got $2,000. You still have two cheats left. We have eight subjects on the board. And you need to pick another classmate. Nathan, come on up Nathan, here, buddy. Nathan, come up here. Woo! You gonna do this, buddy? Let's do this. All right, we got 2,000. 
Okay. You have eight subjects left. Pick one. Let's turn it into five thousand. All right. What are you good at, Nathan? Science, music, or math. Let's go with first grade earth science. First grade earth science. For $5,000, Steve, here's the first grade earth science question. By definition, what does a weather vane measure? Rainfall, wind direction, or air temperature? By definition, what does a weather vane measure? Rainfall, wind direction, or air temperature? I think he's writing a textbook about this. <laughs> Nathan's locked in. Okay. I have an idea. I'm not 100% sure, though. What are you thinking? Tell me I'm what thinking, thinking wind direction, because a weather vane usually sit on top of, like, barns and uh, turn around measuring the wind direction. But I'm not 100% sure on that. All right, let me tell you about your cheats. You have a peak and a copy. With a peak, you can look at what your classmate has written down, see if you like it or not. If so, you can go with it. With a copy, you have to take the answer that they have written down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my peak. All right. You want a peak. If you had to guess, what would you, what I'm would you say? I'm guessing wind direction. All right, the question is, by definition, what does a weather vane measure? Rainfall, wind direction, or air temperature? Your 10-year-old classmate, Nathan, said wind direction. Well, I think Nathan's on the same track as me, so I'm going to go ahead and lock in my answer as wind direction. Steve? Yes. You have $5,000. And we'll be playing for $10,000 right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah. Our contestant, Steve Ham, has $5,000. We are about to play for $10,000. Wilshire. What subject should Steve go with? <laughs> oh, interesting. I'm going to go ahead with second grade social studies. Wilshire well, sure said second grade social studies. All right. Yeah. For $10,000. Here's our second grade question. What variety of fruit is mentioned in the official nickname of the U.S. state of Georgia? What variety of fruit is mentioned in the official nickname of the U.S. state of Georgia? Nathan has locked in his answer. You know what? Georgia, you always hear about it, the Georgia peaches. And I'm thinking that's got to be it, because that's the only thing I've heard of nicknames coming out of Georgia. I am going to say peach for my answer, and I'm locking it in. <laughs> Woo! The official nickname of the U.S. state of Georgia is the Peach States. You got $10,000. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Yeah. Good work, Nathan. Good job, buddy. Thank you, Nathan. Good job, buddy. All right. Woo. Well, your classmates can only help you two questions at a time, so it's time to pick another one. Who's ready? Sierra. Sierra, come up here. That's pretty cool that he brought his dog today, huh? Yeah, I love it. Do you have any pets? No. Oh. Believe me, I wish I did. I got a feeling because you just said that on TV, we're going to have like 150 dogs out in the parking lot tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Sierra, out of the six subjects, which two do you like the best? Second grade music and third grade animal science. Second grade music and third grade animal science. You know what? I'm an animal lover. Since she likes uh, animals also, I'm going to go with third grade animal science. Third grade animal science. Woo! Steve, I really want you to get this one right, because if you had flunked out up until this point, you would have left here with nothing. You get this one right, you've got at least $25,000 no matter yeah! what happens the rest of the day. Our third grade animal science question for $25,000 is... True or false, 
Only male lions have manes. True or false, only male lions have manes. Sierra's locked in her answer. Okay, well, distinguishing thing about lions is the fact that the males have the big manes around their necks and the females don't. So and it's not the kind of cat you want to get out of a tree either, is no, it? No, no, those are a little too big for me to <laughs> grab. So I am gonna say uh, true as my answer because only male lions have manes, and I'm locking that in. Male lion is the best job in nature. You know that, don't you? That's right. They're king of the jungle, right? Well, and the women go out and catch the food. That's right. All he has to worry about is that his hair looks good. That's right. <laughs> we have a picture on the board that will tell you whether or not you have $25,000 or you're leaving us with nothing. May we see the board, please? do have means. You got $25,000, Steve. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want to stop there. I don't either. This next question is the freebie on the show. Absolutely. No reason not to answer the question, because even if you miss it, you have $25,000, which is what you have right now. <laughs> this one's worth $50,000. We're halfway to a million. Pick a subject. Well, I know Sierra said she liked music. We're gonna go with second grade music. Second grade music. For $50,000. The question is, coming up when we come back. Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Our contestant, Steve Ham, a firefighter, has got $25,000. You are playing for $50,000. Yeah! Here is the second grade music question How many keys are there on a modern standard piano? How many keys are there on a modern standard piano? Sierra has already locked in. Okay, that was pretty You made fast. a noise when the question came up. I did, because uh, I never really played the piano. But I think Sierra has a pretty good idea of what it is. So she said she liked music. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my copy. If I made you guess, what would you say? For some reason, the number 26 stands out in my head, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Let's see what the rest of the class thinks. How many keys are there on a modern standard piano? The rest of the class said 88. Something tells me they know something about music I don't know. <laughs> if she doesn't have 88, you're 86. Uh, that wouldn't be the first time, but I have all the faith in the world in Sierra. 88 is the right answer. For $50,000, Sierra wrote 88! <laughs> the bad news is, I lost my classmate. Thanks. You have lost your classmate. Good job, baby doll. It may be time to rub the lucky helmet yeah. a little bit. I may need that. Because it's just you and me. You may look at the question and still drop out of school, OK? OK. Four subjects remaining between us and a million dollars. When you were in school, what was your best subject? Uh, English. Not one of the four choices. Oh. Surprise. What was your worst subject? Math. One of the four subjects. Yeah, so, uh, let's go with fourth grade science. Fourth grade science. <laughs> Steve, take a look at the board. Here's the fourth grade science question. 
The laws of motion are named for what English scientist who first published them in 1687? The laws of motion are named for what English scientist who first published them in 1687? Let's discuss what could happen here. If you guess wrong, you drop down to 25,000. Answer the question right, you go up to 100,000. It's a $75,000 swing. I don't know what they're paying at the fire department these days. Uh, you know what, Jeff? Um, I got a beautiful wife and a young family at home, and I'd hate to lose 25,000 for something I'm not 100% sure about, so I am gonna go ahead and drop out. If you had had to guess, Steve, what would you have guessed? The only name that sticks out in my mind is Isaac Newton. Oh, uh, see, and you want to see what the class said? Sure. Because every one of them got it right. The class said, Isaac Newton. You would have had $100,000. $50,000 is a darn good payday. Very happy for you. And remember our little deal? It's not as scary as a burning building. People do it here all the time. That's right. There's the camera. My name's Steve Ham. I may run in burning buildings, but I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll be right back right after this. Department to the police department. You ready to meet your new classmate? He is a 44-year-old police officer from Oak Lawn, Illinois. He attended St. Gerald's Catholic Elementary. Welcome, Daniel Olson. Daniel, how are you? Welcome to the show. Look at that picture. Whose picture is it? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say it was Ron from the Harry Potter movies. Uh, <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. Now, wh when you attended St. Gerald's Catholic Elementary, what were your best subjects? Uh, art. Art. That's about it. And what was your worst subject? Uh, probably math and English. Math and English. All right. Well, lucky for you, we have people that are good at those things, and they're going to help you today. Yes. So pick one of them. Let's get started. Let's go with Nathan. Nathan, come up here. Now, if at any point this proves to be too much, you can drop out of our little classroom, you can take the money and run, just like a burglar. But one catch, you have to promise me before you leave, you will look into that camera and tell millions of people I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I'll do that. All right, we have a deal? Yes, we do. Let's find out, is Daniel Olson smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah, every officer likes to travel with a partner, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So they Absolutely. have your back. Yes, got my back. You got a good one today. Ten subjects for $1,000. Pick your first one, Dan. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going with first grade English. First grade English. My worst subject. Your worst subject. Here's your first grade English question. What word is the subject of the following sentence? Sierra's dog did backflips for three hours on Thursday. What word is the subject of the following sentence? Sierra's dog did backflips for three hours on Thursday. Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay, I would say the subject is dog. I'm gonna lock it in. I'm gonna lock in my answer. Exactly right, yes. you got a thousand dollars. Who do you have here rooting for you? I have my wife and my three children. Hey y'all, how are you? Congratulations, beautiful family. And my wife 
teaches first grade. Your wife teaches first grade. I probably shouldn't have said that. So if he, if he, if he had flunked out on a first grade question, he would have never heard the end of this, would That's he? That's right. That's right. Dan, you've got $1,000. Yes. All right, let's double it. Let's turn it into 2,000. Pick another subject, Daniel. All right, partner, here we go again, partner. Let's go with first grade social studies. First grade social studies. You got a little strategy here. Let's oh, work yeah. up the ladder. All right, for $2,000, here is the first grade social studies question. True or false, the White House is the official residence for both the U.S. President and Vice President. True or false, the White House is the official residence for both the U.S. President and Vice President. Your classmate and partner, Nathan, has locked in his answer. What are you thinking, Daniel? I'm thinking is they can't have them both live in the same place all the time. If something happens to that building, they're both gone. So I'm gonna say, the president does live there. The vice president doesn't. So I'm going to say false. Locked in my answer. Your logic is right. The vice president lives at number one observatory circle. You got two thousand dollars. Good job, man. Still a good partner. Still a great partner, kid. All right, Daniel, you've got $2,000. We're about to play for five. Pick another classmate. What do you think? What do you think? Olivia. Olivia, come on up. How are you today? Good. You look very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. We have second through fifth grade left. The next question is worth $5,000. Pick a subject. What's your best subject? Okay. Um, second grade animal science. Okay. You know what? Partners, partners, we got each other's back, right? Let's go with second grade animal science. Second grade animal science. The $5,000 question is coming up when we come back. Smarter than a fifth grader. Our contestant, Daniel Olson, has got $2,000. We are about to play for $5,000. You selected second grade animal science. Daniel, here is the $5,000 question. Which of the following is a venomous snake? Python, cobra, or anaconda? Which of the following is a venomous snake? Python, cobra, or anaconda. Your classmate Olivia locked in her answer. What do you know about snakes? Ever had to deal with those during the course of a work day? Not in Oak Lawn, no. We don't have very many snakes out in Oak Lawn. I know, I, I think, I believe the python and the anaconda are basically, basically constrictors. I don't think the cobra is. Um, you know what, I'm gonna go with B, cobra. I lock in my answer. said the python and the anaconda are both constrictors, meaning they use their muscles instead of venom. You're 100% right. You got $5,000. I know you guys are all heroes. Is there a little bit of a competitive thing between the fire department and the police department? Yes, there is. Steve left with $50,000. So is that in your mind, I have to beat Steve? Yes, by at least one. $51,000. $51,000. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's an option on the board. But right now, you're about to play for 10. Pick another subject. All right, like I said, play it safe. Great second grade world geography. Second grade second world geography. Second grade world geography. Daniel, the $10,000 question is this. 
Which of the seven continents is the smallest in area? Which of the seven continents is the smallest in area? Your classmate Olivia has locked in her answer. Um, let's see. Do you know the seven continents? Yes, I know those. I'm gonna go with the smallest one, which is also, uh, let's see, its own country. I'm gonna say Australia. Locked in my answer. What would you say would be the next smallest? Antarctica. So you think Australia is smaller than Antarctica? Antarctica is huge. My Antarctica is huge. <laughs> <laughs> Antarctica is actually two million square miles larger than Australia. You're right, you've got $10,000. You got $10,000, $10,000, nice work. Six questions remain on the test. Three classmates left to pick from. Pick a classmate. All right, okay. Cody, come on down. Cody! <laughs> Cody, you got a cheering section. How about that? Oh, I love you, Cody, they said. Do you have a girlfriend? No. I think you do now. All right, partner. All right, Let's go, partner. six subjects. Let's go. Cody, what do you like the best? Um, measurements and astronomy. Measurements and astronomy, both third grade question. Let's go with third grade astronomy. Third grade astronomy. I really want you to get this one right. Because you get this one right, no matter what happens the rest of the day, you're going home with a minimum of $25,000. Yes. For $25,000, here is the third grade astronomy question. True or false, the sun is the only star in our solar system. True or false, the sun is the only star in our solar system. Cody has locked in his answer. I'm gonna chance this. I'm gonna answer it myself. You're a little bit of a gambler, aren't you? You know what, I, I actually play it safe most of the time. Um, I'm gonna say true, lock in my answer. So your thinking is 50-50, even if you're wrong. Right. Your partner can save you. Let's see if he can. True or false, the sun is the only star in our solar system. Your partner said true. You want to call for backup? Do I need it? How confident are you? What do you see at night? You ever work nights? I, I bet you work a lot of oh, nights. Yeah. I see a lot of stars. When you look, uh, look up in the sky, you see a lot of stars. stars. These stars that we see in the sky at night are actually from other solar systems. The answer is true. You've got $25,000. <laughs> well, I, I knew you had a good partner behind you today. We're halfway to a million, Daniel. You have both your cheats and your save left. The next question is a great question because even if you miss it, you leave with 25,000, which is what you have right now. What do you think? Um, what are you good at again? Uh, measurements. Uh -huh. Okay, like I said, play it safe. Safety is no accident. Third grade measurements. Third grade measurements.
Here we go, Daniel. For $50,000, the third grade measurements question is, in U.S. currency, how many bills featuring Alexander Hamilton would you need to equal two bills featuring Benjamin Franklin? In U.S. currency, how many bills featuring Alexander Hamilton would you need to equal two bills featuring Benjamin Franklin? Cody has locked in his answer. Okay, I think I notice. It's all about the Benjamins, which I believe is a hundred dollar bill. That's two hundred dollars. The Hamilton is a ten, so I would need twenty Alexanders for two Benjamins. I'm gonna go with twenty Alexanders. Locked in the answer. You had the right to remain silent <laughs> and to use your partner. You chose to go in alone. That's a little dangerous, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel really good about this one. Daniel? You are right, you got $50,000! We'll be playing for 100000 when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? I, I feel like it's career day here in our classroom. Our first contestant, Steve Hamm, was a firefighter. Our contestant right now, Daniel Olson, is a police officer. And you remember, because you said there was a little competition between the two, your buddy Steve walked out of here with $50,000, which is right where you are at right now. You have two classmates left. Daniel, it's time to pick another partner. Mackenzie! Mackenzie! Let's go, partner. It's getting tough now, okay? All right, we're almost to the top of the ladder. What two subjects do you like the best? Nature and earth science. Nature and earth science. What do you think? You know what? Let's take um, fourth grade nature. Fourth grade nature. <laughs> Daniel, let me remind you. You can see the question and still drop out of school, okay? Do not hit the silver button too quickly. Our fourth grade nature question is a classroom club question, which means this was sent in to us by our viewer, Madison from St. James School. And because we selected Madison's question, we are sending St. James School a computer lab. How about that? <laughs> For $100,000, here's the question. What pigment found in plant leaves uses energy from sunlight to make food? What pigment found in plant leaves uses energy from sunlight to make food? Your classmate Mackenzie has locked in her answer. You can drop out of school with $50,000. I'm not gonna drop out now. No way. Um, you know what, I'm gonna use a cheat. I'm gonna use the copy. Yes. If you had had to guess, what would you have said? I would have said chloroform, but I think it's a different word. It's not chloroform, it's something else. I believe. It's... Sounds like chloroform. Olivia, tell him what it is. Chlorophyll. The right answer is chlorophyll. If she said chlorophyll, you have $100,000. If she didn't, 
You're leaving us with 25,000. Daniel, there's the board. The question, what pigment found in plant leaves uses energy from sunlight to make food? Your classmate McKenzie said, Conifer. Daniel, I am so sorry. sorry. You sorry. dropped back down to 25,000. Right. Still a good day's pay on the, on the police force, right? Oh, yeah. You know Steve is going to be waiting for you in the hall. The back door, yep. Uh. Well, 25,000 is still a great day's work, but Absolutely. we had a little agreement up front. I know you're a man of your word. There's the camera. Tell the world. I'm Dan Olson from Oak Lawn Police Department, and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.